Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Ictish, and today I'm going to run through um, InmailX, which is software that is uh, attached to Outlook that enables you to control and manage your mail, dealing with attachments, and also offers integration into um, records management systems such as Trim and into SharePoint as well. And I'll run you through some of the cool features it has. So let's just open Outlook. So I'll be using a demo account today um, and probably sending from myself backwards and forwards in and out of my demo account just so that you can see how um, emails coming in and out in any environment might work. Um, I'm hoping obviously as with all things demo that there's no issues while I'm busy recording this. So let's just jump right on in. So here is my mail. As you can see, I have some attachments here. Um, someone that sent me an email with a CC on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new email just so we can see how things work. So here I am sending some emails. I'm saying it's an important email because aren't they all important? And enabling, once I'm in my email shell, to attach a file. So in Outlook, you have this up in the ribbon. You probably all know it's there, but if you don't or needed a reminder, you can attach files from here. You can drag and drop files in as well if you've got some files that you've been working on. So if I just attach some files, um, that one and that one. There we go. Here's my three files. So normally with attachments, you hit send and off it would go um, immediately sent with no nothing else to be done to the attachment or to the email itself and this is where InmailX is is really fantastic so if I hit send it has a couple of features that are built in that come out of the box one is send God which it's it's a prompter it's pretty much saying are you sure this is who you'd like to send the email to and are you sure these are the attachments that you want to include now if you send emails external or internal to the business and there are a lot of people called let's use Michelle there's sometimes a fair chance you'll send it to the wrong Michelle or you may also even put the wrong attachment in while you were busy um, dragging and dropping or, or adding the file so this is pretty good just to say you know, are you sure this is what you'd like to do so I can say yep okay this is what I'd like to do in MailX will then come up and has some other options that allows you to do. You can PDF them and send them straight away. So there's no checking. You're sort of saying once they're PDF'd, send them off. Fantastic. You can choose not to PDF them. So you can do what they call a clean and send. And what clean and send does, it actually removes all the metadata and all the information, uh, document properties attached to the document from the document. So it's a nice clean uh, reference document if you need it to be. Um, PDF and review does exactly that. It'll PDF these documents for you and then allow you to review or to carry on writing your email if you want. So I'm just going to do a PDF and send for a moment and show you not only is PDF and send fantastic, but there are a couple of things you can do when you're sending attachments straight away on the fly. I can, if I've got these three um, um, documents in my email, I can elect to combine them all. So if these documents were all relating to the exact same piece of information, I can create a file name um, that makes sense to someone. So I can call them project documents. And what that will do, it'll take all three of those documents and put them into one PDF with some bookmarks down the side of the actual PDF. I'll open one and show it to you when it sends it through to us. Um, I also have the ability here, if I wanted to, to change the order of the way things are. So I might actually want VIP to be down the bottom and I might want the business plan to be at the top. So nice alphabetical sorting. Now I'll show you how cool that can be as well. Um, and I'm just going to do that for now because there are some other things you can do at the same time, but I'll just do that. So what I've done here is I've said, here are my three documents. I want you to make them one awesome PDF, and I want you to create me some bookmarks inside um, the PDF so people can get to them easily. And I hit OK. Now in my leg starts PDFing the attachments. It will then also create... Um, one big PDF with the bookmarks in it and we'll send it off so it's not going to prompt me again um, am I sure or do I want to review anything because I asked it to do all this it was a PDF and send so 
it's doing all that as we go. So it's combined the attachments, as you can see, and it's gone. So that'll start coming through to me um, probably in the next minute or two. I'll create another email. I'm just going to send it again to myself. Uh, call it something else, some more information. And it's important, again, because, yep, as I said, isn't everything. I'm going to attach some files. Now, at the moment, um, oh, I'll actually attach this PDF one as well. So I've attached a couple of different options here in my email, in my um, attachments. So again, I can hit send and, and let it go. I also have the options in InMailX to also go send and file. So I can send it and file it into a folder or into SharePoint as I go if I wanted to as well. Um, but for this demo, what I'm wanting to show you is another attachment feature. Again, it's prompting me, am I sure this is what I'd like to do? Yes, it is. And I'm now going to PDF and uh, send. Now I'm going to actually, yeah, well, I'll go PDF and send for a moment just so we can see. This feature that I'm going to show you now is the ability to rename your attachments. So if I just move the box down, rename the attachments so that they make more sense. So if you have a very detailed naming convention within your company, you may have things named by like, you know, date and then the author's name and then a policy number and the type of document or whatever it might be. So you could have quite a long naming convention or you could have the name of a document um, is, you know, policy 24 slash 2. You know what that means, but nobody else does. So what this allows you to do is to rename the attachment you're putting in the document. You're not affecting your document at all. So the, you, what you're doing is giving people a view of a document. So if I just call it remote access, right, done, changed. Um, I'm going to do this one as well, and I'm just going to call, just take these pieces out and call it other options. I'm going to leave connectors as it is for now. So here I am. I've renamed my two documents um, that I've attached. It makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, I'm going to say OK. Now, because I said set, um, PDF and send, if you have a look here, you'll see the documents will change their name. I'll just wait a moment. There they are. And be gone. And it, that is fantastic um, for if you have documents called a specific thing. Um, you might have the word template in front of it, for instance, and you don't want the word template. Attach it as it is and change the name as you go. One of the other ones, I'll just have another one um, that you can see also to deal with attachments is attaching this. Is you have the ability instead of having to hit send and letting it go through all the all the steps and having all the pop-ups and clicking all the buttons, you also have the option in your ribbon under message here for attachments as well. So you can clean an attachment from here. So clean metadata from the attached document. Let's just go like that. Let's clean it. What do I want to do? Here are your two documents, and these are all the things that you could remove from Word. So the document property, so like who the author was, how long they edited it, um, the fact that it might be a copy of something else. You can remove all the metadata from the document, the date it was created, any custom properties you may have. Um, if you're using templates, for instance, it'll take that out. Track changes, which is awesome because I know um, if you do any of that sort of mapping of tracking of changes of documents, sometimes you can forget to turn that on and off and everybody else gets to see it any of the hidden text, so anything at all you can remove from Word, Excel, PowerPoint, as you can see here, PDFs even, and from images. So it's very powerful, the ability to clean anything that you've attached. So I'm just gonna hit OK. It cleans them, it's not doing anything to them. It's just giving them a bit of a clean, all right? So this is what I asked for here. I can PDF them from here if I want. I can zip them up into a zip file if that will help too. Reorder, which I showed you with the um, attachments before, but if I go into reorder and I go, I'd actually want McTish to be the very first document that is attached now, it just switches them around just like that, which is fantastic. I can rename them from here too. So if I go rename and I just go, well, I know I'm just going to take the word McTish out for a minute and say that perfect support. Yep, perfect. Say okay. It's renamed it. 
But all of a sudden you've realized, oh, that's not what I want to do. Undo button is in, in MailX. It's everywhere too. So I can undo and it will undo the rename. So if you have a look there, if I redo it or I undo it. So you have the ability to just revert back to whatever the attachment was called before, which is fantastic. You also can create tasks and appointments from within here. So if you're going to send this email and you want to create an appointment based on that, you can do that from here. And it will keep the documents and it will keep the actual email that you send as well. So I'm going to send, what am I, shall I do? I'm just going to send it and I'm going to file it in uh, my folder in Outlook. Send and file because I need it all grouped together. It confirms what do I want to do with it. Now, because I've cleaned it already, it will still come back and say, do you want to send it and PDF it or do you just want to send it and you don't really care what you're doing with it anymore? I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and hit send because I'm, I think I'm happy with what's happened there, which is great. So a couple of minutes ago, we did a document where I embedded three other PDFs and created one document from it. So I didn't have to have Acrobat or any fancy Adobe product in order to do that. InMailX allows me to do that from while I'm sending an email, which can be very, very helpful. So I'm just going to open that here just so you can have a look. And here we have, now you remember I actually had them in a specific order. So here are my bookmarks. Here is my awesome PDF that I called Project Documents. And here are the bookmarks relating to what I'd created all by themselves, jumping from one thing to the other by bookmarking. So you've now contained your three PDF documents in one big PDF for everybody to be able to access it in one location, um, which is, yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. Okay. Just to go through something else that they have here. So, in InMailX, you get prompted, you have a send guard, which I showed you earlier, which is the thing that prompts up and says, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? So it also works when you're replying back to someone. So in this email example, I have two email addresses. If I hit reply all, InMailX goes, uh, are you sure you'd like to do reply all? Which I know some people in Outlook turn that off, but... I find that quite good, especially if you've got attachments. I go, yes, I, I, I am pretty sure I want to do that. Um, I can send something back and say that I'm testing. And when I hit send, can you see it's taken the attachment off? Because it's there's a setting that has said, well, you don't actually have to include the – it's come backwards and forwards. I don't want the attachment in here anymore. Demo and Harmony and say OK. So here's my connector PDF. It's realized that connectors is already part of that email and Harmony will already have it and reply to all. And it just it just does it all quite seamlessly for you without you having to remove the attachment or be confirmed to send it. You can actually be rest assured that all the settings in InMailX, which are up here, um, and come out of the box, actually manage your mail for you much easier. So, you know, the reply to all I, I really find quite fantastic. You can, from inside InMailX, schedule tasks, appointments, and meetings as well. So if I wanted to now arrange a meeting from that email, it keeps my email um, Outlook uh, attachment. It actually includes what information was in the email. It's sent it to the three of us because I'm creating a meeting from it. It's assumed that I want to have the people that were CC'd or sent it involved and allows me to send that off to them um, right from within my email. Um, so I could go send. Uh, yes, I don't really have a location, so just send it. I'm going to pretend it would be a Skype meeting, so I could do a Skype meeting if I wanted. It confirms that I'm sending it to the right people. Now, I could come and go, oh, I don't really want Harmony there. No problem at all. Um, I'd have to confirm with, you know, yes, okay. Well, actually, I will let her come. Why not? and say OK. So it, it prompts you at every step to make sure you're doing what you need to do. The email's got an attachment. Just send it. I don't really mind. I'm happy for it to go. So off it goes. What you also have here, if I just go into one we haven't, you haven't had before, so we'll go into these ones. 
is from up here to go save attachments. Now, a lot of the time when you're saving attachments from email, you either save them all or save one at a time to your desktop and then save them where you want to go. Within MailX, you can save it immediately. And the cool thing about it is you can actually elect what to save. So I can say, well, there's three attachments, but I want the connector to go into marketing. And I want these two to go into Michelle. So if I just say save, I'm not saying save and close it so you can see. It tells me where I've saved them, which is great if you've got a lot of attachments, you can actually see. You can also elect here, save to multiple. So you might have an attachment that's related to two or three different um, projects or clients or two lots of information. You can set it to save to multiple boxes so you can see it in three different spots. That could be quite useful. So um, just to show you here, these are my, if you have a look, all of my ones that I have in Outlook. But I have at the top here two favorites. And that is where you can connect to SharePoint Online. So that's what I've got here. I could connect it to SharePoint Online and there's specific areas that I save documents and attachments and emails in and out of. And those are the ones I go into all the time. They're set as my favorite. So you are able to set locations in SharePoint. So in this one, we've got our SharePoint one connected up and into a network drive. So if you do um, still save information into file shares and network drives, if that's the way you work, you can actually map it from here. Um, instead of going file, save as, and saving each attachment out at the same time. So I'm just going to save and get out, I'm out. So I don't, I don't know about you, but I find that quite, quite good to be able to have three attachments and save them pretty much wherever I like. I have a quick file, if I have a look up in my ribbon, so up the top here under filing, I can go quick file into my favorite, select that and off I go very very quickly my recents which is all the places that I have an outlook that I do quite often and other locations and this is where if you haven't got something saved in here the ability to go and and say I want to save it into SharePoint I want to save it into my team site or a team space for instance you have the ability in Outlook. Now, I did a webinar, I think, oh, I don't know now, it would have been about a month or two ago um, on Outlook and some of the cool features of Outlook. So um, in MailX just, you know, just enhances that exponentially in being able to manage emails and attachments. So you can, um, you know, you can, if I say I want to file this email, for instance, and I want to file it into my documents, file and close. All right. Now, of my permission because my McTish demo sometimes gives me a little bit of an issue but all good so it is the ability to save and it's told me I've got an error um, it'll save the email and the attachment it'll save it out and it will put it in um, SharePoint so all embedded together um, as I said because I'm in a demo environment my demo email um, it doesn't have permission to that space so it's giving me an error which is actually pretty good from a permissions point of view from SharePoint as well so you know that you, you know only if you needed that specific thing um, locked down so only certain people can add content to it you at least have that which is fantastic one of the other things you have up here is being able to create, and this is just a cool thing, just I'm going to throw this right in at the end of, of, a, of the presentation, is um, um, up the top here in forms, and it's called phone. Now, I didn't see that quite a while ago um, when I was looking at all the things in my Alex. I always ever looked in this little ribbon here to be able to find things. And I never noticed phone before, but the fantastic thing about phone is if you and you know what it's like people will phone and you pick up their phone next to the desk and you might if you do maybe you don't and you they say oh can I leave a message for you know for Harmony please do you mind if because I just you know could you phone me back so if I say that this message is going to Harmony and what I do and say the call was from Kylie and the company is McTish and her phone number is that uh, right. And um, this is what she wants, okay. She phoned, um, please could you call her, and she said it was urgent, all right. Now, 
I've just quickly typed that in. I haven't written it down on a sticky note or anything because I'm in front of my phone, in front of Outlook. But if you have a look here, the subject line says call from Kylie, who it was from, what the phone number was and the reason. Now, it populates that from these fields. This is customizable. You can add to this form if ever you wanted to and you, and you have the need. It, it's something you could create for yourself even. But where this is powerful and the reason why I'm showing it to you is that in this you know, technology-driven world, most people, a lot of companies, um, enable their um, staff to access their email on a mobile device, on an iPad, or an iPhone, or on, on an Android, on anything. And what this allows you to do, sending it in this format, is if they access that email message on their phone, this number that we've typed in here up the top is clickable. And all you do is tap it and it says, do you, like with normal with the phone, do you want to call that number? So even while people are out of the office um, and if they're on, you know, I don't know, they might be on the road or traveling between clients or, you know, running late or something like that, they can get a message and phone immediately without having to come into the office or without you having to wait to hope the sticky note doesn't fall off their monitor, which it sometimes does. So if I just hit send. Again, the God will say, are you sure that this is who you're sending it to? And it is, so I'm awesome with that. Yes, please send it off. So that's just a cool thing. I try to try and end off with you know, something a bit cool and sometimes a little bit more interesting than just, you know, um, what I've shown you. Although I do like all the features um, that InmailX has. It's um, it's pretty fantastic. The ability to, to you know, um, group all your attachments together and form one PDF or reorder the attachments, renaming them and then undoing them if you made a mistake, which, you know, that can happen because you couldn't remember what the document was. One of the things I actually um, hadn't shown you if I create an attachment, if I just go new email for a moment, I'm going to show it to you again just so you can see. Just a quick one. And it's just one um, attaching that, right? Send, let it test it again. Um, I was going to go into review. No. Is you do have the option to apply passwords as well. So if you want to send an attachment, but you want to make sure, might be a shared mailbox, might be not, you only want someone to have that specific password in order to open it, you can put that on there. Bearing in mind, if you forget the password, then no one can open it really. So, you know, I'm, I'm showing you the password and the ability to to, to save attachments and, and to save passwords onto attachments. But as with all things, just make sure you remember the password, but don't write it down on a sticky note because, you know, then someone else will find it. So, um, yeah, just um, an added security option if you thought that you might need um, that sort of option. And on that note, I think I will uh, end this uh, presentation. So if you, you know, I hope you found it useful. I hope you've um, learned a couple of things about what InmailX can do and um, want it and would like to know more. Um, if that's the case, just go to mctish.com.au and reach out to us on the website. Um, one of our uh, one of our team will get in touch with you to talk you through anything else you need to know about InmailX or if there's some other information that you require um, and they'll get back to you as soon as they can with it. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll speak to you again as, as I do a couple more recordings maybe um, closer to the end of the year and um, I'll hopefully have a chat to you all then. Take care.